part of holistic lifestyle, the Abhyanga Sthana. So let's through let's see through the presentation. Right. So Abhyanga. <clears throat> so once again, welcome to the holistic lifestyle. The concept and uh, the subject today's uh, subject topic is Abhyanga bath process, Abhyanga snana. Friends, why Abhyanga snana is required? We need to understand. We need to also understand what are the benefits of Abhyanga snana, how to be done. The first and foremost thing is the Abhyanga snana is very essential. Abhyanga bath is the part of the Ayurvedic, uh, in fact, uh, the part of the Panchakarma. And whatever the Ayurvedic uh, system of medicine, so context, so all these kind of uh, various uh, the practices of Ayurveda through which uh, the various various uh, prakriyas they do. So th they always they try cleaning the physical body in all the aspects, my dear friends. So all the wastage, whatever the wastage is collected within the physical body, it has to be cleansed. The part of uh, one of the one of such part of the process we have already learned yesterday. That is about enema. What is enema and how does it clean the uh, our you know the especially the uh, colon the at the colon a lot of wastage is there at the rectum so it has to be completely taken out otherwise it's, uh, it's going to do a lot of other so side uh, you know a lot of side effects are there so a lot of other uh, the bacteria uh, the negative bacteria and a <clears throat> lot of uh, gases will be produced that we already seen that is one of the cleansing process similarly. Today, we are focusing on one more cleansing process of our physical body. So, every day we are looking at one, one cleansing procedure. Tomorrow also we have one more cleansing procedure. So, today the cleansing procedure, what we are understanding is Abhyanga Snana, Abhyanga. So, what it does, friends, when you do Abhyanga Snana, that means the Snana, that means bathing, you do oil, you know, like you uh, uh, just uh, take the oil and throughout the body you apply the oil. <clears throat> there are many, many, many types of oils are there. Bathing, uh, so especially for uh, body to, you know, in order to apply to the body. So applying the oil to the body and leaving for some time. Let's say you apply for 20 minutes continuously. You apply and you have to massage also. You have to do the massage of your body. Either you do, uh, you do yourself. Otherwise, you can take the help of other person. Or if you have no possibility of anything. Go to the Ayurvedic center, ask for Abhyanga Snana. They will do that. After Abhyanga Snana, of course, they will conduct the steam bathing. That's also very good. So, <clears throat> that way, the Abhyanga Snana can be done. So, you yourself take the oils which are going to be specified now. We are going to tell you which are the oils at what, you know, which season and on what occasion which oil has to be used. That also will explain you. So, the oil has to be taken to the required amount of quantity. So the quantity, once the quantity of uh, oil is taken into a small vessel, so that oil must be little, little heated, not to be too cool. It should be like just a lukewarm, so the kind of a heat, the boiled oil you have to take. Okay, taking that you have to apply the throughout the body, including head also you can apply, and you have to nicely massage. So if you do nice massage of the entire body with the oil, especially these are all medicated or these are actually very uh, the you can say like a the highly uh, efficient oils okay they are all useful so once you apply to the entire body it will be absorbing the body will also absorb that oil inside okay and at the same time with the oil when you massage the entire body all the places you know the legs uh, uh, including face and head and uh, neck you know on the back side on the abdomen on the legs everywhere okay all the hands everywhere so when you massage nicely, what is the first thing, first and foremost benefit is, first you will be releasing the tension, stress, whatever is there within the muscles, whatever existing thing, right? That all will be released. So not only that, what is going to do is, it ensures that the proper blood circulation throughout the body and remove the blockages is the most essential thing will happen. So with these friends, so the blood circulation will be improved to all the organs of the body. Already going on, the circulation is already happening. But at some places, there are blockages. So those blockages and you know it will be removed and the proper circulation of the blood will happen by doing this Abhyanga Snana at some frequent intervals. 
So or how many types I have to do? That means every day you can do or per week at least once. This Abhyanga Snana has to be done. Must be done, my dear friends. Okay. So this is the duration of doing this Abhyanga Snana. And uh, so as you know, the benefits are very clear. The blood circulation will be completely restored. It will be rectified. Any issues are there with the blood circulation, it will be rectified. So such is the, the and there is a statement also. Abhyanga Snanam Parma Aushadam. That means oil bath works as a great medicine, my dear friends. Great medicine. More than a medicine, it works, the oil bathing. Now, <clears throat> I will try to give you some more inputs for you. So, how to bath, which oil has to be used, right? How many times you can bath. So, everything, like, um, you know, the complete, uh, the procedure of, you know, oil bathing, I will try to explain in terms of uh, points. So, try to note down and try also carefully follow this in the regular practice. The first thing is we have to understand what oils has to be used for the this massage, especially the Abhyanga Snana. So let me tell you, the massage can be done daily or at least once in a week is definitely good. If there is a heat in the body, suppose our body is a heat body. Some people's body, naturally, they, their constitution of the body itself produces a lot of heat. If it is a heat body, then that means not only that, atmosphere is also outside heat, for example, a lot of heart is, hotness is there. Right? Then either of this what will happen is you have to use in that in that context sesame oil, alum oil and coconut oil. So out of these three, any oil can be used in this kind of situations. Whether weather is hot, at the same time your body is hot condition. So your body, body itself, the nature of body is heat. So in this condition, mm -hmm. use any of these, one of the oil can be used. Okay. Now, suppose if, if, uh, if you are similarly a cold weather, a cold weather, so or your body is uh, a cold, cold natured body. What you need to do is you need to use the ghee, cow ghee, or almond oil, soft flour oil. And any of this oil can be used. And if there is a heat and cold, so you put all in you know like equal or in all the seasons, the same oil and ghee can be used in equal amount. They can be equal amount, they can be mixed and you can apply. Now, boil the oil and apply it for the body. Okay. Boil, boil the oil, not to the very heat. I mean, it should be a, a just lukewarm kind of thing. And then apply for the entire body. Almost, uh, ma, after applying the oil to the entire body, massage nicely you have to massage 20 minutes minimum. And then uh, leave the gap of 15 20 minutes and then you go for the bathing. Okay. <clears throat> Almond oil or basic cookie is good for massaging the children below 10 years. Remember this point. Below 10 years children, so they can give, they can be massaged with the almond oil or desi cow ki. Desi cow ki. Okay. And we can do the massage by ourselves or by the skilled therapist. Anything you can do. Instead of after massage, then when you are going for the bathing, be careful and note the point. You must not use the soap for the bathing. You should only use gram flow or natural bathing powders. You should not use the soap. Avoid that. Another thing is Saspi oil massage is very helpful for the, the condition where somebody is suffering from a severe arthritis. This oil is very useful. So massage, massage should start from the feet and enter the head. Okay. Anytime you start the massage, only start from the feet. That means you should start from the feet and then, then you keep coming up and then enter the head. So that is the practice of doing massage. You should not start from the head. Okay. If the weather is too cold after the massage, so let's say massage is over and the weather is too cold outside. So then what you have to do? Raw dried ginger kasaya you have to drink. Okay. If at all weather is hot, then outside, then kasakasi. So kasakasi paisa should be consumed. So this is one of the paisa. You can make it. So it's going to cool down your body if it is hot outside. And of course, after the after this uh, bathing, sounds like, like you know, Abhyangasnana, you must give some rest to the body. You have to give at least one hour, uh, one and a half hour. You have to give the rest, the proper rest. Okay. So that's very important. It will be rejuvenated, in fact. And hot water bath, if at all you are taking after the massage, after the massage, you are taking hot water bath. Some people will take only hot bath. Some people will take only cold bath, isn't it? So if you are taking hot bath, hot bath, uh, hot water bath, so you have to start bathing. Your bathing has to be start 
right from the foot to uh, to the end of the head that means you should start pouring the water on the first feet then start going up so finally you can put the water on the head so that is hard bath then if it is a cold bathing start from the head so start from the head so end end at the foot so that's what you have to do okay now <clears throat> final final note one one important note you have to do is so before going to bed so one feet other feet you must uh, you know the two feet are there for example uh, one feet other feet like this you have to massage you have to rub continuously at least you know 10 times rub like this and again one more one other leg on the other head okay another leg so like this so nicely rub each rub each other then what will happen so the heat will be generated and all the points look okay, in all the acupressure points in the so let's say this is a pa pada that is a foot is another foot so in the foot out of the, all the the acupressure points are here the flex points are here they will be pressed and you get nicely my friends so this is the so understanding about abhyanga snana okay so the so now we learned about abhyanga snana friends abhyanga snana must be definitely practiced you know on the the guidelines what we have given so please keep practicing then you will be definitely your health will be taken care your immunity power and you will not go you know unnecessarily will not undergo any kind of a diseases so that's why it is very very essential to practice in everybody's life